let's take a look at Slava solution. The Defender Bike Light. Slava and his team designed a theft-resistant bike light that locks onto the handlebars with a proprietary security screw. This screw requires a special tool to unlock, which comes with the light and is not found in hardware stores. On top of that, there are multiple versions of the screw and tool set, so one tool cannot open them all, making the Defender next to impossible to steal. Innovation can be viewed as a cost. The more costly it is for you to innovate, the less likely you are to do it. But the good news, the cost of innovation has been shrinking dramatically across many fields. And for a closer view of this reality, we're gonna go back to Slava. Let's talk about the first bike lights and sure. the process of how you made them. Sure. So we didn't have a lot of money, um, but what we needed to do is we needed to be able to create prototypes and get feedback from customers, from lead users. So our very first prototype actually was made of wood, and we just had to test to see if it clamped onto a seat post or handlebar as well. So we made that. That cost us about 25 cents. So this is the first prototype for the bike light. Yes, that's right. And 25 it, cents. Yes. The next one we 3D printed, um, and this was our first looks like prototype. And this costs us about $25. 25 bucks for yep. this prototype. Yep, $25 and took us about 12 hours to make. Uh, the next one is when we actually start to put some uh, the guts inside of it. So this one actually, when it has batteries, is working. So this costs us about $100 worth of prototype parts and took us about two, three days. And then once we had that locked in, we made the works like, looks like prototype where um, we actually machined it out of metal. Um, and the thing with each one of these steps and iterations is that each time we pass this to a customer, we got their feedback and we improved it the next time. And each one of these cycles took no more than two to three days. How long did it take you from the first prototype to the eventual bike line and how much money did you spend in that process? So from this wooden prototype that I described to the final prototype we used in Kickstarter, uh, we spent about $1,500. And it took us roughly two months. This is absolutely astounding. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about two months to develop a whole new product and $1,500. That's the beauty of innovation today, the declining cost and the increasing pace of innovation. And you are a great example. Let's talk about Kickstarter. Okay. Why did you decide to launch your bike light on Kickstarter? It was kind of out of necessity. I didn't have any money. I had a bunch of student loan debt. Uh, I had $170,000 in student loan debt and I was living with my mom at the time. And um, I needed a way to pre-fund this product. Uh, and then part of it was that any venture has risk and by putting it on Kickstarter, I've already proven that people want the product. I have people that have pre-purchased the product and it de-risks my venture. And I know that you're launching a new Kickstarter campaign soon. We actually have a number of Kickstarters coming up. So basically every single product that we make, we're going to pre-fund on Kickstarter. So it's like getting a couple hundred thousand dollar investment round a couple times a year. This is really cool, Slava. The other cool sign to me is your evolution as inventor, as entrepreneur. And I want to trace it back because I think many events in your life highlight the nature of innovation today. For example, your family immigrated here from the former Soviet Union. We came as refugees from the former Soviet Union in 1980, when I was six months old. Um, and just before we left, my father lost his job, because that's what happens to uh, em emigrants of uh, the Soviet Union. So to make money, he actually opened a small business out of our apartment making golden rings. So he was a jeweler. The thing is, that if he got caught, he would have been thrown into jail and we never would have left the, the country because the country that I came from, it was actually illegal to be an entrepreneur. So when we got here, the, the family's immigrant American dream was to start a business. So I think that just kind of, uh, I don't know if it came out of the womb that I wanted to start a company, but just the, the inability to do it from the country we left to the privilege of doing it here was part of what drove, uh, part of what motivated me. And here you are today at the wheel of a pretty exciting startup. Over the course of the journey, you experienced some of the fundamental drivers of innovation today. Based on what you've seen, what is the future of innovation? 
I know that the most exciting products that are gonna come out are not gonna come from big companies. They're gonna come from entrepreneurs and innovators and just people who see the world not the way it is right now, but the way that it should be and the way that it will be. Inspiring message. All I can say is thank you for your time today. Really fantastic to spend time with you. Good luck. Thanks, buddy.